Hello and welcome back students to another video tutorial from Genome Biotech and I'm Dr. Nitin Vahi, your faculty to teach you today the different types of RNA and this is the continuation class of biochemistry. The topic is nucleic acid and so now we will be talking about the guide RNA. What is this guide RNA? How does this guide RNA is present in a cell and what is its function? So see, when you are talking about the guide RNA, then this guide RNA which is present in the cell it is functional in the process of RNA editing. So this is the RNA that is responsible for RNA editing. And thus far, RNA editing has been found only to be present in the mitochondria of kinetoplastids. You can see that it is present in the mitochondria of kinetoplastids in which mRNA are edited by inserting or deleting stretches of uridine. So see, sometimes the RNA, sometimes the RNA can, can uh, sometimes the RNA can be effectively edited and this RNA editing is being carried out with the help of an RNA and that RNA is referred to as the guide RNA. And there is an organelle which is being involved. That organelle which is being involved is referred to as the editosome. Now this editosome is an organelle that has the potential to edit the guide RNA. Okay, so you can find it here. I'm just trying to underline it out. The gRNA forms a part of the editosome and contains sequences that hybridize to the matching sequences. Okay, and this will hybridize to the matching sequences, and then it would be the one that would be modifying the genetic information which is present in the RNA molecule. Now, see what this step says is that the RNA can be effectively modified, and that is why it is referred to as the guide RNA. Now, how this RNA could be modified, that we would be looking forward again. Now, this uh, modification is being carried out by the guide RNA. Now, this modification occurred in an organized cellular organelle, which is referred to as the editosome, and the kinetoplastid is the one that is involved in this particular process. Okay, mitochondria of kinetoplastid is involved in the processing of this RNA. So, you can find a uh, processing of this mRNA to insert sequences of uridine present in itself. This particular part is also given in pathfinder part second in pathfinder part second you will find the practical application of this editosome where you will find where this topic is given this topic is given in the process of rna editing in the process of rna editing you can find that there is a function of kinetic uh, editosome okay so this is pathfinder second we are looking at pathfinder second only now in this pathfinder second you will find see this this is the uh, second part and in the second part, I'm looking forward uh, so that I can find it up. Probably I will find it. RNA processing. Okay. This is, okay, capping, tailing, which is going on. Moving forward. Uh, at the, towards the end of this particular topic, there would be RNA editing. And uh, uh, RNA editing, you can find out the function of kinetic course that uh, has been told to you that kind of plastic function and it is the editosome that functions in that particular manner so we are looking forward to that this is splicing now see this this is the topic in part second where this editing is given now see there is a modifying editing that means rna could be edited now see what do you mean by the term editing whenever you are typing something you are typing a letter to someone and then there is a software which is referred to as Grammarly. Grammarly could be used to edit the information which is contained within that particular letter or within that particular paragraph. That means there is certain things which could be removed and certain nucleotide sequences that could be added. All those nucleotide sequences which could be inserted or could be removed there. It is this phenomena is referred to as RNA. In the case of RNA, this phenomena is referred to as RNA editing and this RNA editing is being carried out by an organized cellular organelle that is commonly referred to as the editosome. Now how does editosome carries out this function that we are going to look forward. See. See. See there is a uracil which has been inserted. Now see this, this uracil has been inserted in the presence of an editosome. There are organelles that could be there. Uh, there is an mRNA, very important questions. Two questions have been asked from this particular topic. Two different questions have been asked. And this is the topic for apolipoprotein. Apolipoprotein, uh, uh, 
48 and 100. This would be given here. See this. Apolipoprotein B48 and apolipoprotein B100. Now, these are two different types of proteins. Let me just give you a brief introduction about this editing. How does this editing began to take place? Because what happens when I teach is adiposome in part one, majority of the students cannot recognize the function of guide RNA. Okay, we would be uh, we would be talking about this particular part in part second also. But just to have a have uh, to give you a view of what happens in editing, I'm just going through this. So see, in the case of editing, first this is post transcriptional or post transversal uh, editing. Two very common type of editing that takes place is C2U editing. That means cytosine is getting converted into uracil, and adenine is getting converted into Cytosine is getting converted into uracil and adenine is con getting converted into uh, into inosine. So these are the two basic type of editing that are taking place in the DNA. Now, a notable example of C2U editing occurs within the human mRNA for apolipoprotein. There is a very important protein which is present that is referred to as apolipoprotein. Majority of the students will be uh, thinking that what is the function of this apolipoprotein. See, apolipoprotein is the one that is responsible for the translocation of lipid molecules from the intestine into the liver or from the liver into the intestine. So these are the ones which helps in the translocation of lipid protein, lipid molecules. So that uh, it could be clear to you all. I'm just trying to mention the function. See, apolipoprotein. Apolipoproteins helps in the translocation of, in the translocation of lipids across intestine as well as as well as across liver because see majority of the excess food material is stored in liver as well as from the intestine the molecules could be intestine, intestine uh, the molecules can be translocated okay so there are two different forms of this apolipoprotein which are present one is referred to as apolipoprotein b48 another one is present is in the form of apolipoprotein b100 apo b100 this apo b100 occurs in the case of liver whereas there is another type apo b48 this apo b48 occurs in the case of intestine intestine okay so these are the two different types of apolipoproteins which are functional okay uh, majority of this uh, things will be clear to you all okay now moving forward when we are looking at it that there is a there is a modification that is taking place now see this this is what i am trying to tell it to you that there is a termination codon which is present now there is a codon that is referred to as caa okay now this CAA codon because of editing can be modified into another codon and that codon is UAA. So there is a new codon which has been produced and this is referred to as UAA. This UAA codon which has been produced is the one that will that will be responsible for the translational termination so that a shorter protein will be produced whereas in this particular in this particular uh, one in the first one what is going to happen ca is there there is no modification so that no truncated protein is being produced a complete protein is being produced so now we have two different types of protein one protein is full one protein is present in its complete length another protein is present partially okay this is a partial protein this is a complete protein so both these proteins will function differently dekho bahut hi important baat yahan par aapko pata chali dekho sabse purani hypothesis kya thi one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. That means one gene will lead to the formation of an one enzyme. Then there came another hypothesis. What was that hypothesis? One gene will lead to the formation of one gene, one enzyme, one gene, more than one polypeptide. That means one gene can lead to the formation of more than one type of polypeptide because of trans splicing, because of different types of splicing. Now what happens is that Many gene, many polypeptide hypothesis has arrived. That means one gene can give rise to many polypeptide as well as many genes could also lead to the formation of a single or multiple polypeptide in the case of multi-enzyme complexes. 
pyruvate dehydrogenase and other complexes a single enzyme of pyruvate dehydrogenase is actually being produced by enzyme e1 e2 and e3 combining together leading to the formation of particular protein so different genes can also give rise to a particular protein okay as well as a single gene can also give rise to two different proteins at two different sites ye dekhiye hamara gene kaisa hai purani hypothesis kya samjhai jati thi purane ke samay mein purane samay mein bataya jata tha beta ek gene ek protein theek hai ab is gene ko dekhiye ye gene jo hai ye क्या कर रहा है ये इंटेस्टाइन में अलग प्रोटीन बना रहा है इंटेस्टाइन में किसी प्रोटीन बना रहा है टू वन फाइव थ्री अमीनो एसिड की एपो बी फोर्टी एट और लीवर में कैसी बना रहा है टू फाइव थ्री सिक्स अमीनो एसिड लॉन्ग प्रोटीन तो यहां पर ये प्रोटीन और वहां पर वो प्रोटीन तो ये वाला जो अपना जीन है दैट इज रेफर टू एज एपोलिपो प्रोटीन जीन यू कैन सी दिस This is very clearly written. See, apo B four B hundred, which is synthesized in the liver cell, secreted into the blood stream, where transport the lipid around the body. A related protein is also found in the intestine, which is referred to as apo B forty eight. There is another protein which is being found, and that is referred to as apo B forty eight. And apo B forty eight is present in the intestinal cells. So intestinal cells. Have undergone modification within themselves, and they lead to the formation of apo B forty eight. And there is another protein, apo B hundred. Now, majority of your students here would be thinking, why this apo B forty eight? Why this apo B hundred? See, both these proteins differ in their ability to transport the lipid molecules. That is why these proteins have been biosynthesized in the cell. Okay. See, I'm just reading the last part. This change, a uh, CAA codon, is specifying for glutamine into UAA codon. There is a codon CAA which was specifying for glutamine. Now this has been modified to UAA. That means the C has been modified into U, and this is a this is a stop codon. So this will result into the formation of a truncated protein, formation of a short protein. Okay, that protein will be will not be functional. Okay. Adenosine. Uh, now there is in the case of A two I editing, deamination of adenosine result in the formation of adenosine, which is carried out by the enzyme adenosine deaminase. Now there is another enzyme that can also cause the deamination of adenosine can also take place. All this is taking place is in in an organized cellular organelle called as adenosome, and it is being carried out by an RNA, and that RNA is referred to as the guide. RNA or the G RNA. So all these modifications are carried out, carried out in adenosome, adenosome via G RNA. Okay. So this is very important. This has to be noted down. Okay. When I am teaching you Pathfinder or any topic. always try to note down the key important points in your book in your notebook probably in the book only because when you would be revising the book all these things will come up and you will have to again and again revise them up they would be solidified in your brain okay now moving back now moving back to our topic in the pathfinder part 1 if you have any query you can always write in the chat box the queries will be answered automatically no problem now see after the guide rna there is another rna that is present and that is referred to as the mi rna now there is another rna that is referred to as micro rna now this micro rna has an ability in the case of rna interference so that it can interfere after the process of transcription has taken place it is a form of single stranded rna located 20 to 25 base pair nucleotide long and is thought to regulate the expression of many genes okay this is the one that is responsible for the expression of many genes now there are specialized proteins which are present one is referred to as dicer one is referred to as drosa another one is referred to as pasha and third one is referred to as dicer now these enzymes work differentially now how does these enzymes work that we will have to visualize here now there are three different types of protein that are going to work which are the three different types of protein i am trying to Uh, show you the same things just a second now see i'm trying to make a cell in this cell i'm trying to find out where these different different types of proteins will be present three different types of proteins are there as i told you those uh, drosa dicer and pasha 
Now, how the, these proteins are being oriented and what is the function of these different proteins? For example, you take uh, this cell. Let this be a cell. Okay. Now, I'm considering that this is a particular cell which is present. Now, in this cell, where are these, these proteins are there and what are their functions? That I'm going to look forward. Now, in the cell, there are two different components. One is referred to as the cytosol, another one is referred to as the nucleus. Okay. In the cytosol and the nucleus, the different components of these proteins will be functional. I'm just making this to be the cytosol and this to be the nucleus. Okay. Now, within the cytosol, you will find two different proteins. One is referred to as the drosha, another one is referred to as fascia. And there is the third one that is referred to as dicer. Dicer functions within the nucleus. Deco, ye hai hamare miRNA kya hai? miRNA hamare cell ki gunde. Thik hai? Ye gunde hai, ye ladai karte rete hai. Ye ne kya pasan nahi hai? Ye ne koi bhi double standard RNA pasan nahi hai. Vaise to ye insan achhe hai, lekin kahi pe bhi ye ne double standard RNA mil jata hai na, to inka dimaag kharaab ho jata hai. Ki ye double standard RNA ho kaise kya? Kyunki ye vichare hamesha puri zindagi single standard hi rahe. और ये किसी को भी डबल स्टैंडर्ड देखते हुए मतलब बर्दाश्त नहीं कर पाते इनसे बर्दाश्त नहीं होता कि ये कोई डबल स्टैंडर्ड कैसे हो गया ठीक है तो ड्रोसा पाशा और एमआईआरएनए कैसे वर्क करते हैं जहां पर भी इन्हें डबल स्टैंडर्ड आरएनए मिल गया जहां पर भी इन्हें देखिए डबल स्टैंडर्ड आरएनए हेयर पिन लूप मिल गया वहीं पे जाके ये उन्हें काट डालते हैं उस आरएनए को फ्रेगमेंटेड कर देते हैं ऑनर किलिंग इन द केस ऑफ सेल ओके तो ये उन्हें क्या कर देता है डबल स्टैंडर्ड आरएनए मिल गया ना भाई साहब उसे वहीं पे मार देगा it will kill the double stranded RNA at the site by cleaving the, the, this double stranded RNA molecule. So they are the one that would be killing this double stranded RNA molecules. Okay, which whichever of these RNA forms a hairpin loop like structure. Okay, that we will be visualizing how it kills this RNA. What happens in this case? I'm trying to draw this line. Probably this is not being drawn. Now see. So this is referred to as this is the area of drosa and pasha and this is the area of dicer. Ye drosa bhai hai. Aur dusra bhai kaun sa hai? Pasha bhai. Thik hai. Aur un dono se bhi bada bhai kaun hai? Dicer bhai. Thik hai. So dicer bhai functions within the nucleus and drosa and pasha bhai are the one which functions within the cytosol. Wherever they find the double stranded RNA, they cleave the double stranded RNA because they have an special enmity against the double stranded RNA molecule. Bardash nahi hota hai kahin pe double stranded RNA ko dekh ke reh nahi sakte. Usse turant tod dete hain agar unne kahin pe double stranded RNA mil gaya. The Dyson enzyme cuts the nucleotide from the base of the hairpin to release the mature miRNA. The function of miRNA appears to be in the case of gene regulation. These are the RNA that are specifically function functional in the case of gene regulation. These functions in the case of gene regulation, they are the one that will function in the case of gene regulation, regulating the movement of uh, different RNA molecules, as well as in the case of post transcriptional modification of gene. So, all the post transcriptional modification of these genes are being catalyzed by these enzymes. Now, how does they catalyze these in the, these modifications that we would be visualizing? Moving forward. What are the modifications which are being produced? Okay, again, this they participate in the process of RNA interference. Okay, now what is this process of RNA interference that we will have to visualize that how does this process of interference takes place? Okay, so these are the ones who participate in the process of RNA interference. Now, how does this RNA interference takes place that we would be visualizing? By moving into the cell, we cell ke andar chalte hain. Cell ke andar ja ke hum dekhte hain ki RNA interference kis tarike se kaam karta hai cell ke andar. How does this functions within a cell? Now, so we have would be just switching over the screen and moving into the cell. Drosa, Pfizer, and Dicer work only in the case of miRNA. Yes, Drosa, Dicer, and Pasha all these works in the case of miRNA. Now, how does they work? That we have to see. Okay. And uh, just sharing this, sharing the new screen with you all so that uh, uh, we can visualize that up. Just for a second, I'm just opening. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Am I audible to you? 
क्या मेरे को आप सुन सक पा रहे हैं एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू प्लीज स्पीक प्लीज स्पीक यस ओके आई एम ऑडिबल टू यू ऑल जस्ट सेकेंड सो दैट आई कैन मूव टू दैट पर्टिकुलर एनिमेशन टू शो इट टू यू आर एनी इंटरफ्रेंस ओके वी विल बी मूविंग टूवर्ड्स आर एनी इंटरफ्रेंस just a second okay thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you just a second i am just uh, sharing the other screen with you so that you can visualize uh, what i am trying to share with you there is another screen that you would be visualizing now hello Uh, is the screen clear to you all and is it audible just inform me now see we would be moving into the cell now we are just outside the cell and we are now going into the cell and when we will enter into the cell we will come to know that how does the process of this rna interference take to control the genes and many organisms use rna now see please scientists have been making rapid progress in understanding rna interference or rnai Many organisms use RNAi to control genes and it can also be used as a tool in the laboratory and in the future perhaps as a therapy. So see this animation will introduce this RNA interference is a, can be used as a futuristic therapy it has been employed in several different types of uh, cellular mechanism or the control now how does this RNA interference is being done that we are going to visualize if we insert a complementary RNA molecule into a cell then a particular targeted gene can be made silence if you are going to insert a particular rna in a cell then a gene can be made to silence okay uh, if it is audible to you all then due to the principles of rna i'm just stopping here and let the video speak i involving two important types of rna molecule small interfering rnas and micro rnas Okay, there are two different types of molecule: small interfering, called as SI RNA. Another one is referred to as the MI RNA, that is referred to as the micro RNA. Eukaryotic cells have many sophisticated ways of controlling gene expression. In the complex environment of a cell, these mechanisms need to be precisely targeted. Now see this. This is the there's a group of mechanisms part. that use small organisms need to be precisely targeted. Eukaryotic cells have many sophisticated. Now we would be moving into a eukaryotic cell. This is a squamous epithelium cell, and now we are moving into the eukaryotic cell. In the eukaryotic cell, you will find that there would be the vesicles, and vesicles will be transported over the actin filaments. Okay, those were actin filaments that were present, and those vesicles were being transported by kinesin and dynein proteins. And kinesin and dynein proteins moves in a step by step manner. जैसे आप चलते हो ना दोनों पैरों से ऐसे ही काइनेसिन और डायनेन प्रोटीन भी मूव करती है जस्ट एज यू वॉक ऑन योर फीट्स वन आफ्टर द अदर सो द काइनेसिन एंड डायनेन प्रोटीन्स आल्सो हैव अ सिमिलर फंक्शन जस्ट स्विचिंग ऑन द वीडियो प्लीज डू लिसन देन वी विल डिस्कस वेज ऑफ कंट्रोलिंग जीन एक्सप्रेशन इन द कॉम्प्लेक्स एनवायरमेंट ऑफ अ सेल दीस मैकेनिज्म्स नीड टू बी प्रिसाइसली टारगेटेड There's a group of mechanisms that use small RNA molecules to direct gene silencing. This is called RNAi. Now there is a mechanism that is involved in the silencing of the RNA after it has been biosynthesized. So this is called as post-transcriptional mechanism of gene silencing. And this post-transcriptional mechanism of gene silencing is commonly referred to as RNA I RNA interference. See the term interference means that something has happened and now you are interfering with me theek hai pehle karte to baat sahi thi ab jab kuch ho chuka hai aur fir tum beech mein jaake interfere kar de ho ye galat baat hai theek hai lekin fir bhi hum interfere kar rahe hain so this is how rna interference work 
now this is this one was the endoplasmic reticulum now we are moving into the nucleus through the nuclear pore apparatus we are moving into the nucleus of a cell through the nuclear pore apparatus inside the nucleus most genes that encode proteins are tra now this is the nucleoplasm which is present and this is how the dna within the nucleus appears okay this is how the dna will be appearing within the nucleus okay so that's all we are now going to look at rna interference is it audible and uh, visible to all just anyone can write and type and uh, let me be known transcribed by rna polymerase 2 rna port 2 is transcribing the process See? the primary rna transcript is processed by splicing and forms a mature messenger rna sometimes called mrna this is how splicing takes place. The messenger then RNA, RNA is then exported produced. from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. MRNA is moving into the cytoplasm. Here, ribosomes catalyze translation of the messenger RNA to form polypeptide chains that fold into proteins. Now, it is this polypeptide chain. But this is also where some proteins. small RNA molecules can have their silencing effects. There are several types of regulatory small RNA. Now this is the generalized picture present in the cell. Now there are several different types of RNA molecules that can regulate the process of transcription. Firstly, majority of the students are confused why this RNA interference. Why this RNA interference? Why this collaborative? No, why this RNA interference? So why this RNA interference? RNA interferes so that no excess amount of protein should be produced in the cell okay the same amount of protein that has been produced must be produced now supposingly you have made an rna okay uh, you have made an rna molecule and you want proteins from that rna molecule now the protein requirement is finished then you will have to stop or destruct that rna now if you didn't destruct that rna it will form more proteins now see suni kuch cheez aise chal rahi hai jaise ki aap kahin pe marriage mein gaye hain now you are in a marriage and uh, pupils are eating or taking their food materials. So look, khara khara hai, chapati ban rahi hai. So dekhiye, jo aur aage matlab ek series mein kam chal raha hai, to aata gunne wala jo floor ko malne wala hai, wo apna kam kar raha hai. So aap ye sochiye ki RNA interference kya kar raha hai? Bhai roti banane wala kiske hisab se roti banayega? Kitne log kha rahe hain? Yani ki proteins kitni banni chahiye? Usi ke hisab se to RNA ka transcription hona chahiye. RNA ban gaya. Maan lijiye aata bahut saara मल के उसने रख दिया पहले ही और खाने वाले लोग कम थे तो आटा बर्बाद जाएगा कि नहीं सिमिलरली अगर मान लीजिए प्रोटीन बहुत ज्यादा बन गई सेल के पास में और उस प्रोटीन की अब ज्यादा जरूरत नहीं है सपोजिंगली आप रात को खाना खा के सो गए तो क्या सलाइवा की जरूरत है नहीं है आपको सलाइवा की जरूरत क्योंकि आपकी बॉडी तो अब क्या चलेगी बेसल स्टेट पे चलेगी रेस्टिंग स्टेट पे चलेगी सेलेब्री अमाइलेज के आर का क्या होगा अरे सेलेब्री अमाइलेज के आर का होगा डिस्ट्रक्शन थ्रू आर एन इंटरफ्रेंस इट इज अकेज विच इज यूज टू टाइटली रेगुलेट द अमाउंट ऑफ आर एन एट शुड बी प्रोड्यूस इन सेल सो दैट नो एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन शुड बी प्रोड्यूस मैं फिर से इस लाइन को रिपीट कर रहा हूँ आर एन इंटरफ्रेंस एक ऐसा प्रोसेस है जिससे आप ये रेगुलेट करते हैं कि कोई भी एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन सेल के अंदर नहीं बने क्योंकि आप एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ आरएनए को बनने से रोकते हैं आरएनए को जैसी रिक्वायर्ड प्रोटीन की खत्म हो जाती है आरएनए को आप रोक देते हैं अगर चपाती खाने वाले रोक नहीं है पार्टी में तो तुरंत किसको रोका जाएगा गैस से चपाती बनने वाले को नहीं आटा मलने वाले को उससे बोला जाएगा कि तू रुक जा भाई सबसे पहले तू रुक केवल गैस वाले को कम आंच पे करने से कुछ नहीं होने वाला वो तो मल रहा था ठीक है तो हमारा वेस्टेज चला जाएगा तो उस वेस्टेज को प्रिवेंट करने के लिए जो मैकेनिज्म है ना वो है आरएनए इंटरफ्रेंस होपफुली आपको समझ में आया आरएनए इंटरफ्रेंस क्या करता है कैसे करता है अब हमें ये देखना है Small interfering RNAs, known as siRNAs, are derived from longer double-stranded RNAs that are either produced in the cell itself or are delivered into cells experimentally. The introduction of siRNAs or double-stranded RNA is widely used to manipulate gene expression. MicroRNAs are another type of small RNA. Most microRNAs come from RNAs that are transcribed in the nucleus, which then fold and are processed before being exported into the cytoplasm as double-stranded precursor microRNAs. Now see, the majority of the microRNA are being processed and they will lead to the formation of a double-stranded microRNA in nature. Once the double-stranded microRNA are being produced, then these microRNA can be effectively analyzed, okay? Now, how does the microRNA function? The double-stranded precursors of microRNAs and siRNAs bind to DICER, which is an endonuclease protein that cuts the RNA into short segments. Now, there is a protein that is referred to as DICER. DICER is an endonuclease protein that has the ability 
to cut this mi rna into specific fragments geyser will chop it into small different types of fragments which are present okay if you have any query you can ask okay through writing in the tab most sirnas and micrornas are approximately 21 nucleotides long the short double stranded rna then binds an argonaut protein one strand of the RNA is selected and remains bound to argonaut. This is called the guide strand. The combination of the RNA and argonaut, along with other proteins, is called the RNA-induced silencing complex. There is an argonaut protein, there is a single-stranded RNA protein, and this is referred to as argonaut RNA protein complex. It will target to a specific site and at the specific site, if the recognition of the ultimate sequences takes place, then that site will be chopped off. Or risk. SIRNAs direct risk to bind to specific messenger RNAs. The targeting is precise because it's determined by base pairing between the SIRNA and the target messenger RNA. Now see this. There is a precise targeting that is taking place because there is a base pairing between the SIRNA and the MIRNA. Now this SIRNA is going to target those MIRNA of which are complementary to it. So you can silence specifically, the cell can silence specifically mRNA molecules complementary to the SIRNA. Cell kya karta hai? Cell ek SIRNA ko le leta hai, SIRNA ko banata hai, uske saath mein ek protein hoti hai, aur ek complex banta hai, that is referred to as RNA-I silencing complex. And this RNA-I silencing complex which is being produced is commonly referred to as the risk complex okay so this risk complex is the one that will lead to the formation of rna interference now sirnas often have perfect complementarity to their target sites once bound argonaut catalyzes cleavage of the messenger rna which will then be degraded this is how it is being micro rnas also guide risk to messenger rnas Usually only part of a microRNA, known as the seed, pairs with a target messenger RNA. There is the microRNA pairing with the target RNA. This imprecise matching allows microRNAs to target hundreds of endogenous messenger RNAs. This type Targeting by a microRNA can lead to messenger RNAs being degraded or translation being inhibited. Now see, transcription is stopped. For stopping the translation, if the proteins are not more any more required, then you have to stop the transcription because transcription is not being stopped. So what you are doing, you are destructing all those RNA molecules which are present in X. Argonauts and their small regulatory RNA cofactors are found in plants, animals, fungi, and some bacteria, and their importance in a multitude of biological processes and as tools continues to be revealed. So see this, this is the how these proteins function. They are the one that are responsible for several different biochemical processes. They are found in all the different types of organisms, whether it is prokaryote, whether it is eukaryote, whether it is bacteria, whether it is any other organism. Uh, they are found in almost all the different types of organisms. Okay. Now moving forward, uh, again back to our uh, uh, back to our class. This is the one who was all about RNA interference. This is how, this is how the, uh, in the new, uh, in the cell, the contracted vacuoles, the vacuoles which are present are being transported via the help of kinesin and dynin protein. See, the step-by-step -step manner, jaise aap chalte ho, as you walk, the kinesin and dynin proteins also utilizes the ATP in the same manner and they are dancing at their own tunes over the actin filament. They are moving at, over the actin filament, transporting proteins from one place to the other. This one was all the complex that we have seen. Okay. That's all over uh, for this animation. We will be moving back to the Pathfinder. Okay, we are moving back to the Pathfinder part. Okay, so next RNA that comes into our uh, picture is referred to as tmRNA. Now, what do you mean by tmRNA? An RNA which has the ability to function as a tRNA as well as an mRNA is referred to as the tmRNA. So this RNA has both these 
regions which are present. One is referred to as the T region, another one is referred to as the mRNA region. That is why it is commonly referred to as tmRNA. It has currently only been found in the case of bacteria, but it is ubiquitous in all bacteria. It is found in different types of bacteria and it is ubiquitous in pres ubiquitously present in all the different types of bacteria. It can serve as tRNA, it can serve as mRNA. So this is the RNA that will carry the amino acid residue from the site to soul and will transcribe the same RNA which is attached to itself. Cytosol se RNA utha lega aur apne hi RNA ka transcription kar dega. Then this is referred to as tmRNA. The ribosome translates this mRNA of the tmRNA and attached to the protein code, uh, attach the encoded protein tag to the C-terminus of the unfinished protein. The attached tag targets the protein for destruction of proteolysis. Then it attaches a tag and this tag is responsible for the proteolysis of the protein to take place so that the protein can be effectively destructed. Okay. So this will also help in the post-transcriptional modification of the protein as well as in their regulation. Now another topic which has been asked in CSIR and the entrance examination, the alkali catalyzed cleavage of RNA. What do you mean by alkali catalyzed cleavage of RNA? Alkali catalyzed cleavage of RNA refers to a process in which the RNA molecules can be effectively cleaved in the presence of an alkali. Man lije koi alkali hai, to alkali ke presence mein aap kya kar sakte ho? RNA ko cleave kar sakte ho. You are not getting my voice in the screen share. Uh, uh, all are getting my voice in the screen share or not? Dear students, you are getting my voice or screen share or not? Okay, now you are saying okay. Okay, so now see this. This is the double, this is an RNA molecule. Now, when this is an RNA molecule which is present here, this RNA molecule consists of a polynucleotide strand. Okay, now what happens in the presence of an alkali? Supposingly, there is an alkali which is present. Now, what is an alkali? Water soluble bases are commonly called as alkali. So, we are going to talk about here the hydroxy group. Now, which could be the alkali that could be present? Alkali could be NaOH. So, this NaOH will produce the hydroxy groups which are present here. This it would be this NaOH that would be producing this hydroxy group. And this NaOH when produces the hydroxy group, that hydroxy group is going to attack here. Any query with the student? Okay. Now, there's NaOH which is present. NaOH produces hydroxy group. This hydroxy group will attack and will transfer the electron over the oxygen molecule. Oxygen will get converted into oxyanion. And oxyanion will attack over the phosphate molecule and will break the phosphodiester backbone. The only question that has been asked from this particular point is that when uh, which RNA undergoes which type of hydrolysis, one is referred to as acidic hydrolysis. This question was asked in back in late 2009, etc. But the second question which has been asked is about which structure is being produced after the RNA has been hydrolyzed. The most important cyclic 2,3 nucleoside monophosphate is being produced. This question has been asked in JNU as well as in other entrance examination. So it's a simple thing. Cyclic 2,3 nucleoside monophosphate is being produced and the reaction that is involved in the process of RNA cleavage is referred to as transesterification. Now what is this transesterification? Breakage of one phosphodiester linkage Breakage of one Easter linkage and formation of another Easter linkage. A Easter linkage ka tootna dusra Easter linkage ke banne ke liye bohat zaruri hota hai. Such type of reaction is called as transesterification reaction. Kahi se bond tootta hai, bacho to kahi to bond tootta hai. This is what has been told here. There the bond has been broken and here a new bond has been produced. This is transesterification reaction. This is how the alkali catalyzed cleavage of RNA takes place. Okay. Now, why DNA is not being cleaved in the presence of an alkali? Because DNA lacks a two prime hydroxy group. This two prime hydroxy group is extensively and exclusively present only in the case of RNA molecule. Where is the two prime hydroxy group? Here is the two prime hydroxy group. You can find this two prime hydroxy group. I'm just trying to label it out. Okay, this is the 2 prime hydroxy group that is extensively present only in the case of RNA molecule. Only present in the, the 2 prime in the 2 prime hydroxy OH group of RNA makes it highly unstable. Okay, makes it highly unstable. 
So this is why the RNA became quite unstable because of the presence of this particular group which is present. Okay, so that's all in this particular topic moving forward. Now there is a hypothesis which is referred to as the RNA world hypothesis. Now majority of the students might be thinking sir which is which was the prehistoric uh, genetic material whether it was DNA or whether it was RNA. Why cannot RNA uh, be used as a genetic material as you have seen that RNA has a very high rate of mutation it could be effectively lysed very easily that is why RNA, can, RNA cannot be used as a a genetic material whereas DNA is much more stable but then majority of the students will say sir there are certain viruses such as Ebola such as such HIV majority of these viruses have an RNA genome okay in fact our corona also has an RNA genome I will forward up um, um, one of my manuscript just published uh, in a journal uh, you can go through it on corona so you get some basic information about corona also uh, it is also in uh, having an RNA genome. Corona is also having an RNA genome and is able to biosynthesize the 29 proteins which are present in it. Uh, we will be talking about that. So majority of the viruses have an RNA for, uh, RNA genome. Then why does in the case of viruses this hydrolysis is not taking place? Now see, uh, firstly in viruses hydrolysis is taking place and that is why the viruses are mutating. You would have heard a term that Corona is very fast mutating. Why Corona is so fast mutating? Because this RNA which is present in Corona and in other viruses such as HIV, this RNA used to get fragmented and again joined at another position. Now see, when the RNA is being joined at new position, then what is going to happen? The entire sequence of the RNA is going to be altered. Because of unstability of the RNA, the viruses have gained their stability. RNA unstable tha, isiliye virus khud stable ho gaya, kyunki virus ke andar ab bohat teji se mutation ho ga, isliye viruses ne RNA ko ek genetic material select kar liya hai apne andar, aap dekhenge dunia mein sabse khatarna viruses kaun se hain, RNA viruses, it is never the DNA viruses are never so, so dangerous as compared to the RNA viruses, whether you take the case of HIV, you take the case of HTLV, you take the case of Ebola, you take the case of coronavirus, all these are RNA viruses in nature they mutate themselves they breaks their phosphodiester linkages forms new phosphodiester linkages so supposedly our antibodies are being made against a particular virus then what happens at the next time the virus will change its structure doom 3 ठीक है वायरस अंदर अलग सेल के अंदर अलग फॉर्म में जाता है सेल के अंदर से जब बाहर निकलता है तो एकदम अलग फॉर्म में निकलता है मोहल्ले वाले कंफ्यूज हो रहे हैं कि घर के अंदर कौन गया था घर के अंदर से कौन सा वायरस निकला है समझ में ही नहीं आ रहा है किसी को ये वायरस कौन सा है और हमारी सारी मोहल्ले की एंटीबॉडीज कंफ्यूज हुए जा रहे हैं नो बडी इज एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हिच वायरस हैज एंटर्ड इनटू द सेल एंड व्हिच हैज मूव्ड आउटसाइड बिकॉज़ ऑफ द आरएनए व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन द वायरस द वायरसेस आर एबल टू म्यूटेट मच मोर फास्टर ओके नाउ मूविंग फॉरवर्ड RNA is a genetic material you can find now see why there was an RNA world hypothesis because RNA has the ability to biosynthesize proteins RNA has the ability to biosynthesize DNA by reverse transcription as discovered by Tamman and Baltimore so RNA can form protein RNA can form DNA and RNA itself is also a genetic material in the prehistoric world RNA was able to mutate and thus form the complete array of different organisms through evolution that took place so RNA world hypothesis was being given that the prehistoric genetic material was not the DNA, it was just the RNA. Now see, RNA is a genetic material. You take the tobacco mosaic virus. There are two different strains of tobacco mosaic virus. One is referred to as type A tobacco mosaic virus. Another one is type B tobacco mosaic virus. In the latest tradition of Pathfinder, these two have been shown by different uh, color and different format. One is shown gray, another one is black. So it becomes very easy to understand. Now in this format, what is being done? RNA A is being taken and then RNA B is being taken. Then combinations of the pro uh, protein, a combination of the virus is being produced. One is with protein A and another one with RNA B. Now infection of the tobacco leaf takes place, then which protein will be produced? Tobacco mosaic virus type B will be produced because here the RNA serves as the genetic material and RNA will lead to the formation of protein. So who firstly proved that RNA could also act as a genetic material? The reconstitution experiment as was performed by Francis 
by Frankel, Cornet, and B. Singer firstly proved that RNA could act as a genetic material. See, the question has been asked. Question has been asked from this particular point that who firstly proved that RNA could act as a genetic material? It was Cornet and Singer through the reconstitution experiment. The name has also been asked. This is very important. Reconstitution experiment which was being produced. Okay. Now moving forward. Nucleotide biosynthesis. Now, how does the nucleotide biosynthesis takes place? Now, see, there are two different processes that takes place in our body. One is referred to as anabolism, another one is referred to as catabolism. Both anabolism and catabolism are included in metabolism. Now, just uh, just to have a short recap, I'm mo moving it to a new slide, the whiteboard. Okay. See, the there is a phenomena that is referred to as metabolism. Okay, metabolism. Metabolism refers to the sum total of all metabolic reactions that takes place in the body. Now, when the, there are reactions that are taking place in the body, then this complete is referred to as metabolism. Now, if this is metabolism which is present, then in the this metabolism could be categorized into two different types. One is referred to as the anabolism, another one is referred to as the catabolism. There is anabolism. And there is another thing that is referred to as the catabolism. Okay. I'm just placing it here. Catabolism. Now these anabolism refer to all the biosynthesis reactions. Whereas catabolism refer to all the degradation reactions which are taking place. Both these are included in metabolism. Okay. Now, there is a balance which is being maintained in the cell. Cell always maintains the balance in between both these things. Okay, it it has the ability to maintain the balance. Now, how cell is going to maintain this particular balance? That we have to see. Okay, so if there is a cell, then the cell will have to ma maintain a balance in between these two factors. Okay, there there is a balance that is to be maintained. Just a second. Let this be our cell maintaining a balance in between all these molecules okay so this cell has the ability to maintain the metabolism the balance between the anabolism and the catabolism anabolism all the all those reactions that will lead to biosynthesis of nucleic acid catabolism will lead to the degradation of nucleic acid now see nucleic acid will be biosynthesized because our cells needs nucleic acid for their replication to take place because new nucleic acid is being required in, in our cells uh, for the synthesis of new cells that is referred to as anabolic pathway catabolism is the degradation pathway now anabolism can be again divided into two different types which are the two different types of anabolic pathways that could occur in the cell one is referred to as the de novo pathway another one is referred to as the salvage pathway now one is referred to as de novo pathway pathway and another one is referred to as the salvage pathway okay salvage Okay. So there is another one that is referred to as the salvage pathway. Now what happens in the case of de novo pathway and what happens in the case of salvage pathway? If new nucleotides are being biosynthesized completely, then it is referred to as de novo pathway. If new nucleotides are being biosynthesized, then it is referred to as de novo pathway. If new nucleotides, nucleo Sites are biosynthesized, biosynthesized from each carbon carbon nitrogen atoms, then it is referred to as the de novo pathway. Another pathway which is present is referred to as the salvage pathway. In the other pathway, what is going to happen? In the other pathway, the molecules will be biosynthesized. But how these molecules will be biosynthesized? From a pre-existing digestive molecules. Molecules of nucleotide, nucleotides being synthesized, synthesized from the digestive precursors precursors of the nucleotides. Now what happens? Now we also eat food material. When we eat food material, that food material also will have the genetic material present in the form of DNA and RNA. That molecules are being broken down in our cells. Now our body has, uh, has, uh, has made a mechanism in which the partially digested nitrogenous bases could be 
used for the biosynthesis of new nitrogenous bases in our body. This pathway is called as salvage pathway. अब देखो मान लो एनाबोलिज्म क्या है कुछ बनाने वाली रिएक्शन कैटाबोलिज्म क्या है तोड़ने वाली रिएक्शन अब आपको एक घर बनाना है ठीक है आपको एक घर बनाना है अपने लाइफ स्पेन में तो आपने क्या किया दो तरीके हैं आप डीनोवो पाथवे पे चले आपने एक प्लॉट खरीदा उसके ऊपर एक एक चीज जोड़ जोड़ के जोड़ जोड़ के घर बना दिया दूसरा पाथवे था सालवेज पाथवे आपने क्या किया सालवेज पाथवे को फॉलो किया सालवेज पाथवे क्या कहता है आपने डायरेक्टली पैसा जोड़ा मतलब आपने क्या किया सालवेज पाथ में पुराना घर ले लिया उसको मॉडिफाई करा लिया आपने फ्लैट बुक कराया फ्लैट ले लिया उसको अपने अकॉर्डिंग मॉडिफाई करा लिया तो हमारी बॉडी की भी बहुत सारी एनर्जी बचा लेती है थ्रू सालवेज पाथवे कैसे बचा लेती है हमारी बॉडी क्योंकि जो आप खाने में फूड में अपने अंदर डाइजेस्ट करते हो जो कि फूड मटेरियल वट एवर फूड मटेरियल टेक इन योर बॉडी दैट फूड मटेरियल इज बीन डाइजेस्टेड इन योर बॉडी and whatever nitrogenous bases or nucleotides remains these nucleotides are being utilized in your body as a precursor for the biosynthesis of new nucleotide so this is very important that we use another pathway that is called as salvage pathway salvage pathway are known to to save the large amount of energy that would be wasted in the de novo pathway now again moving back to our primary slide now see there are two pathways which are there one is referred to as salvage pathway another one is referred to as the de novo pathway now see what happens in the case of salvage pathway you get a pre formed nitrogenous base pehle kya mil gaya aapko nitrogenous base mil gaya aapne kya kiya activated ribose dale aur aapko nucleotide mil gaya theek hai hamare aaj ke zamane ke ghar wale sa matlab kaise banayenge wo kya karenge bhai ek pizza base le aaye maggi bani banayi le aaye ek base le aaye usme pani milaya le beta kha le maggi they this is nucleotide purane zamane ke log theek hai अमीनो एसिड्स को जोड़ा नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस को जोड़ने के लिए एक एक कार्बन को लेके आए नाइट्रोजन को लेके आए और फिर उनसे चुन चुन के उनको जोड़ जोड़ के क्या बनाया न्यूक्लियोटाइड बनाया आपको जो रोटी मिल रही है उसके लिए कितना सारा काम करते हैं जम वगैरह लेके आए ये किया वो किया और एक एक चीजों को जोड़ा दैट इज रेफर टू एज दी नो वो पाथवे द पाथवे दैट इज वॉज स्टेप बाई स्टेप प्रोसेस ज्वाइनिंग ऑफ ईच न्यूक्लियोटाइड टूगेदर विद ईच अदर ज्वाइनिंग ऑफ ईच एटम्स टूगेदर विद ईच अदर टू बायोसाइज न्यूक्लियोटाइड इज कॉल्ड एस डी नो पाथवे हर एक एटम को जोड़ जोड़ के जो बनता है ना वो डीनो वो है और नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस वगैरह जो आपने निकाल लिए डाइजेस्टिव मॉलिक्यूल्स से जो आपने फूड के थ्रू लिए थे और उनसे बना लिया तो वो क्या है सालवेज पाथवे बोथ डीनो वो एंड सालवेज पाथवे लीड्स टू दस बायोसिंथेसिस ऑफ राइबो न्यूक्लियोटाइड सो सी दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बोथ ऑफ दीज पाथवे आर इन्वॉल्व इन द बायोसिंथेसिस ऑफ राइबो न्यूक्लियोटाइड दे विल लीड टू द बायोसिंथेसिस ऑफ राइबो न्यूक्लियोटाइड ऑल डी ऑक्सी राइबो न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स आर कल्चर सिंथेसाइज्ड फ्रॉम द करेस्पोंडिंग राइबो न्यूक्लियोटाइड Furthermore, the methyl group that distinguishes between the thymine of DNA and the uracil of RNA is added at the last step. After this step, me modifications kiye jaate hain. Methyl group ka jaise addition hai, koi aur modification hai, to ye last step me kiya jata hai. Ab hume ye dekhna hai that how does these pathway operates in a cell. So we will be starting with de novo biosynthesis tomorrow as today. The second class is being taken by uh, Krishna Kumar Jhakar sir. So KK sir would be initiating his class just after five minutes. Okay. you will get the recording before his class ends on youtube and you will also get the recording of kk sir uh, in this particular lecture okay thank you i am just leaving uh, please uh, unmute yourself kk sir please unmute yourself uh, hello good evening uh, hello good evening uh, krishna please unmute yourself now you all can unmute yourself if there is any query you all can ask me else i should leave if there is any query you can just unmute yourself and ask me any query by anyone no any? queries sir I always there are no queries okay you can ask anabolism or catabolism wala chat dobara see in the case of ha uh, i will explain it again in the in the whatsapp group that what is anabolism what is catabolism all will be present in the form of a recorded version okay thank you so krishna i am handling over the class to you that's all thank you okay sir i am logging no, just wait for a second uh, i am i am trying to uh, give the login information to you from here only okay and also share uh, also record the class thank you